Hey guys, it's the Xbox Nut. Um, I just thought I'd give you an update and a mini tutorial on how I've done my new 8-bit memory bank, which I plan to expand to a 2-byte. So it's going to have an 8 eight bits here and 8 bits there. Maybe even 3 if I can really, if I'm really up to the challenge. And I'll just show you how it works. So the in, the output, as you can see, it's 10101110. One zero one zero one 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 zero. No matter what I do to all of these, like the other one, it's getting dark. Like the other one, it won't change unless I clock it, and then it will change to one 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 zero 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 zero. And I plan to have a seven bit adder here, with the output going like this: one two three four five six seven eight, and these fourteen inputs over here and then I will hopefully put another byte of memory above it and I've used a different design for my D flip flops I was just testing them out testing I tested each one out and I found that this one was probably the easiest to implement and even though it's small itself it's surprising how big eight of them strung together are um, same thing as before so we've got our input Sorry, we've got our input here. This is the actual D flip flop. It's, I think it's five by three by seven. It's only, it was three. So the actual D flip flop is just this tiny bit here and this edge here. But this output takes up another two rows because it can't be touching all of the other stuff. Unless you like raise it up, which I probably could, but I can't be bothered. Um, so we've got the input here going in. I don't quite understand how it works. Something to do with like it. It needs an uh, um. It goes into an RS null latch, which is only reset when you initiate the clock, and then it resets again when you take off the clock or something. I don't know. You've got the clock here, which again is run underground, and you've got the um output over here, which is then wired all the way down through the bus, a couple of buses into the my output screen. And my clock input over there runs underground under all of the uh, clock inputs. And I'm just going to warn you just here if you plan on doing this or implementing it into something that you're planning to do, be careful with these extenders between the clock inputs because if this is underneath a wire, it will affect the whole thing which it was for me, it was underneath the output line so it would change the output no matter what the clock was which was quite annoying, so be careful about that um, yeah so another, another, uh, yeah, another thing to be careful about is by the way this is all, this, all this crap is just buses they're just like wires going from the outputs inputs uh, it's not really that important, the actual the D flip flops are so small, so it's really good. So you can stack them easily, I think. Another thing to be uh, cautious about is when you're wiring the outputs or inputs from or to the D flip flops, you need to be careful that if it's running over a torch like this, or not like that, but like that, as they will affect them. Uh, standard stuff, really. And so. I hope this helped. Hope if you're planning on doing this and you were looking for a more compact D flip flop, as one of my friends was, um, this will help. It's just three by three by five by seven, and compared to the other one, it's a lot smaller and better to, and easier to use. So thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.